No, I got a new phone. And it's not working. It, I don't get links as quick as it used to. Tell us more, Jordan. Oh, hi, guys. <laughs> I got a new phone this week. Android. All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? We're going to get started here. Um, we, we may be... Um, we may be talking to Blaney uh, after this stream, but he's got to go take pictures, so we're not going to be able to include it in the stream or anything. So you might hear that added on to the podcast later. We're not even sure if we're actually doing that. So we're just going to go ahead and roll with the podcast, give our reactions to everything this weekend, and then uh, just take it from there. Does that sound good? We also have a special gift for Jeff at the end of the show. Oh, wait. We're supposed to be drinking mojitos too. Ah, uh, oh, that's right. Crap. Oh, crap. Oh, I'm oh. sorry. Later. Yeah, later. Maybe we can toast with Blaney or something. All right. Can you, are you seeing? Oh, I got to take my glasses off. These blue screens here are like are shining. Look at that. Whoa, that's so weird. You see that? <laughs> wow. That's so strange. Okay, sorry. Good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Good Lord. All right. Can you, are you in the screen? I'm in the screen. All right. I like my hair. Here we go. Ready? All right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of The Teardown. My name is Jeff Gluck, and I'm along with my coworker, Jordan Bianchi. We are motorsports writers for The Athletic, and we are here at Phoenix Raceway to discuss this season finale championship weekend. Uh, which is just wrapped up here with Ryan Blaney, YRB, becoming P1, the champ. Uh, how about that? Not something that we saw coming, certainly, um, since neither of us even had him in our final four. Confession time? I think I may have had him out in the first round. In the first round? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah. I think I did. Um, Let's go look. But, you know, this is, this is uh, something I've been thinking about since the race ended a couple hours ago. And, you know, this is... I've been trying to figure out how I want to say this or, or put this into words, but this sort of encapsulates um, what the playoffs are and, and have become, you know, this is the 10th year of this format. And for so long, um, you know, there was, there was many instances early on where pretty much, even though it was one race playoff and all this stuff, like you pretty much go, yeah, well, the guy that won was pretty much like the best driver of the season. Anyway, then like, ultimately like, I'd, I'd almost say up until like the big three and me with Logano mm -hmm. um, was the first time that was like, hmm. Um, you could say Jimmy in 16. Jimmy in 16, although when he did that, it was like, well, it's a seventh championship. Yeah. So nobody like he was questioning the, he had the too bonafides. much. Yeah, yeah. Um, then you get to like Logano last year mm -hmm. and you're like, huh, well, he kind of got hot at the right time and he won. So, yeah, okay, I guess. And but then this year, the Blaney, I think, is the biggest example yet of how different things have become. I mean, he this is Nat, this was NASCAR's diamond anniversary, the 75th anniversary. And to me, Ryan Blaney was the Diamondbacks, uh, although the Diamondbacks did not win the World Series here in Arizona. Uh, they were sort of like the wild card team that was like the last one in. There was all these heavy favorites. Nobody would have thought the Diamondbacks were going to make a charge and do all this. Um, they end up getting to the World Series. The Rangers ultimately won. But this if the Diamondbacks had won, that that is sort of Blaney in a way because, you know, for a lot of the year and especially a lot of the summer, he was a complete non-factor. In fact, he went 15 straight races without a finish of better than ninth. Um, we were trying to look it up afterwards. We believe that Ryan Blaney's eight top five finishes this season is the fewest – at least in the fewest in the modern era, possibly the fewest ever. At least in the playoff era. Well, at least in the playoff era. Yeah. But I'm saying we've, we've gone – before we try to go all the way back to the 1980s, we can't find any champion that had fewer top fives uh, than Ryan Blaney's eight. He had three wins. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you look at it and you're just like, wow. I mean, Ryan Blaney is not – was not the best driver of the season. However, he absolutely still deserved it based on the format. He deserved it based on the playoff. He – he won at Talladega. He, you know, and then he had this excellent third round. Sensational. Which is what you need to do. They they found the speed. They treaded water long enough mm -hmm. to find the speed. And they showed up here and they had the fastest car of the four drivers. Mm -hmm. Arguably the fastest of anybody, except with this track and aero blocking. Um, he couldn't necessarily <laughs> show that. But 
and that's what it takes to win a championship now. So, you know, for me, it's an adjustment. Uh, it's different. I'm not saying it's good or bad. It's just different because for much of my career covering, I think this is like, like 17th season full-time on the beat or something like that. Maybe more. I, I can't even remember. Anyway, th that has been, um, you know, it's th often the champions were decided a different way. Right. And so, um, you know, to be like, well, I mean, he got hot the last four races. So there's the champ, but th that's what it is. That's what, the, that's what the format offers. They took advantage of it, but it's still sort of an adjustment to be like, Oh, this is, this is how it is now. Okay. What do you think, Jordan? I mean, I think you make some great points and I don't, I largely don't disagree with you. I mean, going into this, we had discussed how, you know, you, you always talk about this is anybody can win this, right? Well, the reality was, no one, not anybody could win this. You kind of had a pretty good idea of the three, four, maybe five guys who were going to win the championship. And if you look at really in the elimination era since 2014, it's always kind of been at least two or three of those guys getting that far, right? You know, yeah, maybe 2014, but most part, it was always, you could kind of have a good idea who's going to get there. And especially when stage points were put into place and it really started to reward consistency to another level. This is the first time, I would say, in the playoff era, so going back to 2014, where you had a Cinderella. Like, I don't know if Blaney quite fits that description because he drives for Team Penske and we know how good he is, but nobody, there is nobody that had Ryan Blaney winning this championship. Back. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. <laughs> he oh, just, right. he, he, but he stuck with it all year. He okay. just was a part of that seemed like it was stubbornness to be like, I'm not changing my pick, sure. I'm sticking okay. with my guy. I, I think anybody who would rationally are you know what i mean like it's if you're looking at the playoff field in september when the playoffs started at darlington i don't think anybody looked at the 12 team and said man they, that team right there that's a sleeping pick and so they did what they needed to do and i think i go back to what folks in the garage said to me going into round three in the weeks after he won at talladega i started talking to people in the garage and they all said the same a lot i shouldn't say that. quite a few of them said the same thing if he gets to phoenix look out if he gets the phoenix he's going to be the one to beat and yeah you can talk about how you know in the regular season they were kind of quiet you can talk about how in the playoffs maybe in the first round they you know didn't really show off and then it took a win at talladega to kind of get them in but I, 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 what they did in round three and and excelling and not making mistakes and being really perfect almost that to me was impressive and, and then to come here in a race that would have been easy to throw away because we saw a different Blaney, I thought, tonight than we have at times. He was racing Ross Chastain really, really hard. Um, there are times in Ryan's career where he would have made a mistake. He would have pushed too hard. He would have let his anger get the better of him. He almost did a couple times tonight, and he reined it back in. And it was a really patient, methodical run because you go to look at stage one, he wasn't happy with that car at all. And then, But you look at the board when they finished stage one, and he was upset, and you're like, oh, he's up to 10. And it's just like kept just getting better and better. And I think that, to me, demonstrates what this team is capable of. And yeah, I mean, were they the best team this year? No. But this format doesn't reward the best team over a 36-race season. It doesn't reward it even over a 10-race season. It rewards the driver who I think really over the last four races, because I, I would like to you – know, I think you have to lump in round three. And that is how the, this this is – you're rewarded for that. Yeah, I mean, Joey Logano at the start of the playoffs – was very honest and said, look, our team, Ford in general, we we, we don't have it this year, right? But but what, what I would like to do, this is Logano saying, this is what we did last year, where we hang around long enough to find the speed mm -hmm. at the right time, and then we capitalize. And now they've done it, Team Penske's done it back-to-back, -back, Yeah, it's following sort of the same sort of blueprint and we talked about different Ford drivers. all year long yeah about, like four oh, no that like, Ford came you know unless it's a super speedway they got nothing and yeah then they they showed up and it's they you're right up. like you're right i mean they just it's about when you get hot it really yeah. truly is i mean you look at martin trix jr and i think you would say that he hamlin and larson are probably the three best teams this year uh, by right here those are the four best teams and you know they you know byron and larson got here but Byron, after the first stage tonight, was largely quiet, you know. And so, and then round three, Byron was largely quiet. And it, it's just, it's the reality of the situation. And you have to recalibrate kind of how you look at things. And, and we talk about how, 
maybe you know maybe the championship doesn't have the same significance as it once does. And I think that's a conversation worth having. And I think there's merit to that to some degree. And you kind of got to look at championship four bursts and things like that. And I and I think that's true. But at the end of the day, it's all it's a playing it's an equal playing field across the board. And when it mattered most, the 12 team did step up. Well, what it really comes what what we have to do is start to recalibrate, I think, how we talk about the championship during the season because it's not about who is running the best overall. It's not about who's running the best on intermediates mm-hmm. or road courses or whatever, right? Because yes, those elements are important when it comes to have giving yourself a chance to make it to the championship four. But ultimately when we're talking about the championship favorite, we, because look, William Byron won uh, this race in the spring. Mm-hmm. Blaney was second. Blaney was also second in this race last year and yeah. we know that he could have won potentially you know when joe Logano won he was probably being a good teammate he was being a very good teammate before that he had two fourth place finishes so now he blaney has gone fourth fourth second 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 at this track this track is lays out perfectly for him and last round and even the, the round before that talladega uh, that's that was, why i always say yeah. like i look at the playoffs and how they lay out for teams and drivers yeah and and if you if it sets up well for you you have an opportunity to, if you can just excel on those and do well, it doesn't largely matter what you do the rest of the year. Now, having bonus points and all of that, you know, help you, help you certainly give you a bit of a safety net along the way and prevent you from, you know, moving forward, or prevent you from, you know, getting eliminated. And I think Joe Logano is a perfect example of that, of like you have a bad regular season and you don't have bonus points and, and something bad happens, like at Bristol with him, you're out. But if you look at this and you can excel on certain type of tracks – you, you have an opportunity really to do something. I mean, I, this is why I said Blaney was my pick last week, right? On the podcast, because they had just come off winning a short track. And then the Hendrick cars had shown us again that, mm, wait a minute, Chevy and Hendrick might not be so fast on the short tracks. You know, they, they, they all struggled at, at Martinsville, for instance. Right. And so that gave you pause, like going into today, even though Byron and Larson had better qualifying runs than Blaney and Blaney and Bell. To me, it was like I didn't have a lot of faith they were going to keep up there because Blaney looked good on the long run. And once he got up there, it was like, you know, I the, I don't think those guys were able to hold it. And that's why Byron and Larson said afterwards, hey, there's not really anything we could have done differently. Larson was talking about, man, I wish there was more and more pit stops so my pit crew could yeah. do it for me because they didn't have the car really. And, and even when Larson, you know, we – I will say we were another thing we were wrong about because everybody conventional wisdom had been, well, whoever gets out front of that final pit stop, that's it. Larson got out front of the final pit stop. We both were sitting next to each other and oh, here we go. Yeah, Larson had flashbacks to 2021 again. Right, that's here, exactly what happened. And but they still didn't have even even though on a day where it seemed like track position was pretty important, clean air was important, they still didn't have enough to hold Blaney up. Blaney had a better car. Ford and Penske, they were, they showed us the last two weeks, they were good on short tracks. And, you know, I, I just think that's, that's what it takes. So somebody, you know, we're, we're doing this live on YouTube. The, some of the commenters remind me or listeners, you know, next year when we start talking about, well, this guy's running pretty well, he's leading the points, regular season champion. That's not what we need to be looking at. We need to be looking at who's running well on short tracks, mm-hmm. who ran well at Phoenix, um, can we, do we think that still translates over? Um, because yes, Hendrick looked good on the short tracks early. They won. And, um, you know, like I said, Byron won and, and I think Larson led the most laps here early in the, in the year. Um, but things flipped over the course of the season and that wasn't the case by the time we got back here. So, you know, um, it's, it's a new world. So I, I think, you know, for me to be like, uh, this is, this is, crap, this is all blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's not, it's not going back. You're not putting it back in the bottle at this point because by nature of this format, it's okay. If, if you want the, the best car of the year, then the format is 36 races mm-hmm. or even the 10 race playoffs, essentially. Although you could, that could still bring in some wild card elements. This format is not, this is about, Hey, let's, let's see what happens and roll the dice. Now, Steve Phelps in his press conference, you know, the other day says, this is not gimmicky. This is about the best drivers. I I disagree with that. I mean, I think this is, this is to make entertainment. This is not about who is, who is the fastest all year. This is about, okay, who can 
here, we're going to put this race out in front of you straight up heads up for these four that are left and who brought the best car out of those four Blaney did. And he's the champion. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's again, it's sort of weird standing on pit road afterwards. I'm like, man, this is such an odd feeling because I don't really know how to process this right now. And I still don't is, you know, it's only a couple hours old, but it's just, uh, it's just different. Yeah. I mean, I, but playoffs by themselves are never going to reward any, you know, they're not always going to reward the best team. And, you know, you, you the regular season is always going to be better embodiment of the, of the, of the work. So I, I struggle with this because I think there is an entertainment element to this. You have to keep it exciting. I think going back to a 36 race, you know, one, one through 36 point system is not going to do anything at all to maintain interest at this time of year. And I, I don't have a problem with it. And I think it's no different now than any other sports where you look at it and you say, you know, Boston Bruins last year had a NHL records regular season. And guess what? They got bounced in the first round. It happens all the time in other sports. And I think it's just, you have to just kind of look at it through a different prism and that this is, this is not the NASCAR now is much different than it was, you know, 20 years ago. And it's not, it's not going to change. Of course, it has to be pointed out, though, that the difference between stick and ball sports sure. is those are, are head up, heads up against another sure. team one on one. This has all sorts of different elements, um, including drivers crashing, you know, and, and getting caught up in somebody's mess, a tire failure, a brake failure, a mechanical problem that is a fluke um, or essentially the, the playing field being different from place to place where it favors one over another. Um, like a short track versus an intermediate or whatever. So um, when you when you have it in a one race format, that, that's what you get. However, again, Brian Blaney deserved this. So it's 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 a weird dichotomy because he he is the deserving champion. He went out and executed. His team found the speed at the right time. They absolutely, out of everybody that was here, they're they're the champs. Mm -hmm. You cannot take that away from them. You can't poke holes at it. Um, it's just different. And, and I think people are just going to have to say now, okay, well, I think wins overall, like when you look back at things, championships matter, of course, but like when you're looking at who are the greatest drivers of generation and all this stuff, I mean, I think you're just going to have to lean more on wins, um, to really measure it and to really measure these drivers place in history, because this is sort of like just a, a, a fun tournament in some ways. And, um, it's entertaining and um, I don't know. It's just, yeah. But let's talk about how Blake got it because um, it, it wasn't going to be easy. After, look, I will say this. The Blaney of a year ago was pretty much, I mean, I don't know this sounds too hard, but a choke artist um, who had not come anywhere close to filling up to fulfilling his potential. He completely screwed up twice in the playoffs last year and threw it away mm -hmm. by mistakes of his own in the throne three. And, you know, it was like, man, how's this guy ever going to get out of his own head to have a clean run? Um, and even after, I mean, that thought was in my head, he, you know, he had put together a really respectable run to try to shake that um, and try to make a new reputation for himself this year to get to the final four. Like mm -hmm. he broke through the final four and you know, we had talked, you know, talked to him last week about cleaning up those mistakes and stuff like that and, and learning from that. But when you have just passed Kyle Larson, um, who is one of the best drivers on the planet, late in the run, heads up, and you have now got to hold him off for 20 laps to win a championship with Larson trying to do everything he can, um, and you don't blink, that more than it, that is – that's an achievement right there. That is earning it. That is really impressive. Ryan Blaney completely transformed himself in a year to me. Like to, to, and again, we've talked all year about like the mentality of what, of what it takes for him to go out and be able to execute like that. Um, and not, not choke and not throw it away and not make a mistake, not run into the wall late, not get flustered. I mean, yeah, he gets mad on his radio, but he did what he needed to do. A lot of guys get mad at the radio. I think it gets overblown a little bit because a lot of there's a lot of guys rant. He, he's entertaining, and I think that's part of, part of the other. Yeah, 
can I just review this really quick? Sure. This is what, and I don't mean to keep going back to this, but I do think it's a it's a good peek behind the curtain a little bit. About this is what, your story where you got the scouting report, anonymous scouting yep. reports from people in the garage yep. about the drivers going into yep. the, the round. This three. is the two things I think they uh, take away from this. The biggest thing is Ryan Blaney's temper and him losing his mind. If he doesn't do that, he can be really good. I think Blaney's past mistakes in the playoffs weigh heavily on the team just from an execution standpoint. And that is right. And the other one to keep in mind too is if Blaney can do well as long as he doesn't blame. Like, I mean, that's that's kind of the rap on him. And it's maybe unfair, but it's there's truth in it. And it's not just what happened last year when he crashed at Las Vegas and he crashed at Homestead and threw away two know, top three, top five finishes. And obviously he would have moved on to the round. He would have moved on to the championship round, no problem. It's the year before that at Kansas. I mean, it's just there's always been these mistakes. And we have been waiting – for Ryan Blaney to have a year like this for a while. He was a rookie in 2016. Um, he actually won a race before Chase Elliott did, you know, and it was like, he, he touched on this a little bit last week, like his peers, right? Like William Byron, Christopher Bell, Chase Elliott. Um, we're all having these big monster years. Bell had made the championship for Elliott's obviously got a championship. Bell, uh, Byron, had, you know, this year, for example, had a monster year. And we've just been waiting for Ryan to, like, get over that home. Like, when is he going to, like, get over it? When is he going to get over it? And it hadn't happened. And I think it plays into the narrative of, like, when is, it, is he ever going to actually do this? And he finally did it. And it wasn't easy. But – and I talked to his dad, um, Dave Blaney, after the race was over. And I said, you know, what – When was there lessons you took – he took away from last year, Ryan, that he was able to apply? And he goes, yeah, there was. And one of the things was they really talked about managing races and not letting like a mistake spiral and, and snowballing. And that was something they kept in, in, in you know, kind of kept in, in perspective this year. And, and I think you've seen that a little bit from Ryan when things are going wrong, they aren't, one mistake isn't leading to two mistakes, which is leading to three. They're kind of cutting it off at one and then, then you're, that's it. And that is the difference this year from him and, and that team as well. Well, I mean, look, and that's very hard to do. Kyle Busch throws races away. Mm -hmm. Kyle Larson throws races yeah. away. Um, a lot. Both of those guys did a lot this year. Yeah, and and to so to, but the different can I just mm -hmm. the yeah. difference between them is they win a lot of races though too, and they compensate. You know, yeah, I mean Larson and Busch throw away a lot of races, but they also win double digit, not double digit. They win multiple races a year. So, and in both their cases, they're champions. So it's like they, they, there's a little bit of balance here. It's like they atone. Like you weren't getting the atonement from Blaney. He was winning. You know, before this year, only once in his career he had won multiple races. And so, you you know, you're getting that one race from him a year in the victory lane, and it just wasn't enough. He wanted more. Much was made today of um, Blaney's anger toward the way he was being raced for the championship, whether that was from Truex. He hit Truex under caution. He, um, he nailed uh, Ross Chastain under green while they were trying to pass. And, um, you know, this was – this was why I was frustrated with this race in particular. Um, well, before that, watching it up in the press box, I really felt like, and I, I tweeted, and boy, did people get mad? Some people got mad at me for this. You didn't think this was a great race? Oh, it turned out. It turned out good. Okay. I think it turned out. I mean, especially by Phoenix standards. Um, but for much of this race, you know, there's these long runs, and you would see cars get to another car. And even at times try to pass. And it was like, it, it felt like the old 550 package in intermediate somewhere where they would almost, it would almost be like a penalty for trying to pass. And they, they couldn't get around somebody, even if you, you could sense that it was a faster car. And if only that car had clean air, they'd probably run away. And you're just like, oh man, that's why I said, you know, boy, people give Texas a hard time, but how come people don't talk about how Phoenix consistently sucks essentially. Um, but people are like, well, this is pretty good. This is not such, such a bad race. Um, and it, again, it got way better. So, you know, I look like an idiot saying that now, but you know, Blaney was experiencing that in the car because Ross Chastain, he said was blocking three lanes. He was completely mirror driving. He was using all the air to keep Blaney behind him. And I understand Blaney's frustration because up until now, this is the 10th year of this format. Um, I think the championship four in most cases has gotten raced pretty easily. Oh, they get, they, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Today was not that. No. Nobody was racing them. Oh, he's like, <laughs> did you think and, Ross was going to Ross this? What do you mean? Right? Like, I mean, right. I, I, look, he wrecked one of the, the championship guys. 
Uh, I, it just, I don't think so. I don't think he would have done that. I don't think, I mean, even if he didn't want to, it just felt like it was. Yeah, be I think. I think you have more awareness after every, especially after everybody talk, watched the truck race the other night, which we'll Can talk you about later. Imagine if that but, happened. Um, yeah, I mean Ross, if he had taken out Blaney even by accident or something, that would have been an absolute disaster for his reputation. Um, but yeah, I, I, so I don't think he would have done that. But obviously, like look, Ross wanted to win the race, and he was he did what he had to do to win the race, and use he used air to do it um, because Blaney, it seemed like, was probably a faster car. Um, and he didn't let him buy. And so I, I get why Blaney was frustrated because he's like, look, I'm racing for the championship. And then you're like, well, you know, Ross's point was, hey, wait a minute now. All Ross, all Blaney has to do is finish second and he's fine. Well, that was presented to Blaney afterwards. Why and during you- the race, by the way, too. It was presented to him in the race. No, but what I'm saying is his reason was, okay, yeah, Ross, yes, I can finish second and win the, win the title. But what Ross is doing, slowing me up, is yeah. it is allowing Larson to close in on me. Mm-hmm. And that's what Blaney said is my, my frustration was coming from you are allowing my competitor to catch me and I'm trying to get by you with the faster car and you're blocking me, which is again, Ross, I have nothing against what Ross did. Mm-hmm. Ross, Ross is every right to race for the win, just like anybody else. Um, and you know, that's what he did. He won the race. It's huge for them, uh, you know, to get some momentum going in the offseason. They all, everybody that's not in the final that's four wants to do that. For track sure, absolutely. But um, you you can also understand why a final four driver would be frustrated. Like, man, all, every other time we've seen this, mm-hmm. we all get respect. Mm-hmm. And now, now when I'm in this, I've given this respect for years. Yeah. I played second fiddle to my teammate exactly. a year ago. Exactly. And was a perfect wingman. And now when the shoe's on the other foot and I need it more than anything, I'm not getting it. Yeah. I mean, I get the frustration, which yeah. goes back to why, like, I feel like, you know, not, not, not guilty as anybody because I tweet about, you know, what they say and everything on the radio. But it's like, it's frustrating. Anybody would be frustrated in that situation. Anybody would have been. And, you know, I get it. I definitely would have said some things if I was in. Oh my God! You say you do say things even when you're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Can we talk about your tweet now? My tweet about what? In Texas and how? I just did. I know I just we talked just... about it. I just said I was an idiot. I know I don't go back to it though. Um, well, I'm no. My point remains the same though. Like, you know, is this the best? I mean, why why does Phoenix get a pass just because it's the championship race? This I track don't think consistently. Phoenix gets a pass. A lot of people blast this place. Okay. Well. I don't think I don't think I don't think it gets a pass. There's a lot of people that sit there and say, "Why do we go here twice a year? Why does this have the championship?" Yeah. I mean, we heard about it. How many times have we heard about it over the last I don't know, a few weeks? Like, why are we not in Homestead? Why are yeah. we not? Homestead? So, I mean, I don't think it gets a pass. I mean, I think they're. I think if you pulled everybody single person in the garage, they would tell you. Ninety nine percent of them would tell you, "Let's go to Homestead." Yeah, I don't know. I was just sitting up there and I'm like, man, like this just doesn't seem the best uh, place to decide the championship like this doesn't feel like this is this is the biggest test of the of the four guys who are left to race it out and really determine which of these four is the best um but again i of course i wish you could go to homestead yeah but it's you know we'll be back right here next year and (laughs) probably seeing a similar race unless nascar you know they have a phoenix test coming up in december Mm -hmm. hopefully they're able to find some things i know they're going to work on a lot and uh they're clearly working stuff they, they they know it's not amazing, no i mean but... it, it, no one's burying their head in the sand yeah but there has to be a fix that that's where it's a frustrating thing is i i i struggle because i don't i'm not a technical person i don't know any engineering but is it really this complicated i think it is apparently i think the car has put them in a, a really tough box yeah and yeah. it's tough to and it, i guess it's it's tough too is you're using third-party parts right you're not allowing the teams to, you know, the team, the team, I don't think they told you, they told me this before. Like, if you let us do what, you know, kind of open. Yeah, they're saying that because they want to, they want to, the bigger teams want to be able but to. No, no, I mean, I understand that, but they're probably not wrong. Like, they could probably, if you let the teams tinker a little bit, there's going to be guys that hit on it. There's going to be guys that not, that don't. And because of the the widespread, it's going to open it up a little bit. And then you, you would have more passing. Yeah, I, I don't know what the solution is, but um, I do know that the, the homestead race I saw recently was really cool and it would be a great championship race if that was what it came down to. But again, 2025. it's, it's uh, yeah, uh, let's, we can hope. 
Um, so, you know, let, let's talk about the other guys. Um, you know, we talked about Larson and, and Byron about how um, they just didn't have it, but they didn't have the car. How, how, how do you feel if you're them? I mean, you know, Larson has this, this great season that's up and down. He shows flash of speed all year. Yeah. They, you know, they could have won more races. It ultimately doesn't matter because he makes the final four anyway, but you get here and the speed's not there. You're, you're Kyle Larson. You can do anything in a race car, but you can't, you can't make up for it that way. William Byron, on the other hand, you know, had he not got that penalty, he's probably the regular season champion, right? Um, he had, was, you know, had the numbers to show that he was the most consistent a lot. You know, he, he ends up leading the series in wins with six wins, double what the champion has. Um, and almost double the number of, of top fives, I think, and things like that. Um, if you're those guys, if you're Hendrick, second year in a row, you've let Penske walk in. Um, and you, you come away with nothing. You come away with no title when you, you probably felt like you outperformed Penske. You did. I mean, you look at the numbers, right? They did outperform. So them. how do you feel? If I'm Kyle Larson, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. I feel like this year is a missed opportunity. We left a lot of wins on the table. We left a lot of races. Some of it was our own doing obviously, but there's also other circumstances, whether that was Kansas, whether it was Pocono. Uh, we left, I mean, I can probably think of five races. They probably should have won this year. It's a lot, you know, and for a team of that caliber, you know, we look at 2021, we say it's an anomaly. Well, you know, you give them another handful of wins, all of a sudden they've got six, seven, eight wins. That's in the realm of that greatness, right? And that's a different ball game. Maybe things make it a little easier. And yeah, I think, I think this race is kind of a microcosm of their season season like they were they were very very good but they just weren't to that level that they needed to be at all the time um but getting here for them is the goal really and then you go for you know like you said it's a one race thing and i think that's a big thing especially a bounce back after last year so I, there's a little bit of frustration and, and a little bit of yeah, missed opportunity but also a nice bounce back and reminder of hey this is this is a really good team like this is something special for william byron it's kind of the same vein of, of ryan blaney We've been waiting for William to kind of have this big breakout year. There's been flashes. There's been teases. Um, we've seen it at times. And it's like, I mean, he's just flirting, right? And it's like, when is this going to happen? And it really happened this year. He leads the series and wins, almost wins the regular season title, has a really good playoff, wasn't great in round three, good, but not great, and comes here and, and has a good an opp you know opportunity and – it went away. If I'm them, I'm wondering what happened. What happened to the car that we dominated with, you know, at the beginning of the race? Now, obviously, track change, cools down, et cetera, et cetera. But if I'm the 24 team, I'm looking at this year as a success, a monster success. We won six races. That was huge. We made it to the championship four for the first time. And I'm looking at this going, I got a young driver. I got a crew chief who's now his third full season at the cup level. Like, there are a lot of – fourth full season, three. And – there's a lot of optimism with this team. Like this is the beginning of something really, really special. And also kind of just really, also a Hendrick organization too, which we talk a lot about Hendrick and how great they are, but the 24 and the five are over here, the nine and the 48 are over here. And so they, they got some questions to answer this season because there's certainly something missing there overall. And how about bell? I mean, I think, You'll, you'll, you, <coughs> excuse me, you'll know if this is true or not. You'll have a better memory than I do. But we've obviously seen people in the, in the championship four crash out before. Mm -hmm. um, have we seen somebody in the championship four have a mechanical failure before the halfway point of the championship race before to just take themselves out like Bell had today with the broken rotor? Because, you know, for a while there, it was like we, we, it felt like there was years where we'd see the, the championship four run one, two, three, four. Um, last year, obviously there was the incident with Chastain and Elliot, mm -hmm. um, on a restart. Um, but that was, a, that was not a mechanical thing. That was a wreck, mm -hmm. but Bell just had seemingly bad luck. I mean, he was, had brake issues in the first stage. Um, and then his brake rotor exploded and that was the end. So you don't know what they would have done. It didn't seem like they necessarily had the car to win with. Um, I don't know if they were going to be faster than than Blaney, but they were running, but they were running with them at the time. Yeah. And so, and I will say this because both Bell and Blaney started outside the top 10, right? right. They were both kind of making steady progress. Yeah. And they were kind of the, the three of them, the five, the, the 20 and the 12 were all kind of interchangeable there. So I, we don't know, honestly, I mean, they could have gotten their car better. Absolutely. We don't know. 
Sure. Um, who knows? I mean, um, run through my head really quick. Uh, I don't think so. I think this is the first mechanical failure. We've seen crashes. Didn't happen in 14. Didn't happen in 15. 16, we had the big crash at the end, which right. knocked out a bunch of guys. With Edwards. And yeah, and then 17. I, I don't think there's been a mechanical there. I mean, maybe I'm missing one, but I think this is the first time where we saw someone um, have this. And I think last year actually was the first time, uh, the earliest in a race, that a championship contender had crashed. So, yeah, this was, this was definitely an anomaly. Unfortunate. It's You know, you don't know. Um, this was a team kind of looking at their year. Um, I think they should have been better. Honestly, we had a lot that Joe Gibbs racing at a lot of speed. We saw Martin Truex this year during the regular season. We saw what Denny Hamlin did. This was a team during the regular season that won one race. And at time, for a few weeks this year, they led the point standings back in the spring. And then they just kind of quietly just kind of did their thing. And why is that? And they, they, they lack of execution and lack of performance. But then they got better in the playoffs, and I thought they really turned it on. We saw what the 20 team can be. I think they've now hit a point where they don't get to the championship board. It's a disappointment. And I think they're now at a point where I think he is ready to have a monster, monster year. I wrote about this beginning of the year, and I was wrong. I thought this was going to be like a five, six win season for him. I, I think that team is capable of it, and I think they they need to deliver on that. Well, it's a nightmare finish to the the season for JGR. I mean, you had, mm -hmm. you know, you rewind ten weeks ago, cool. and you go, wow, we got Truex as the regular season mm -hmm. champion. Hamlin looks maybe even better than Truex mm -hmm. as far as a championship contender. And for most of the playoffs, mm -hmm. looked that way, especially when Truex, you know, had such a hard time. And then Bell, you know, was, was showing that he was continuing to have a breakout. Ultimately, Truex and Hamlin don't even make the Final Four, and Bell is eliminated before the halfway point of the race. And you're like, well, <laughs> what just happened here? Um, and now – you know, um, we saw the new Ford body, mm -hmm. the, the dark horse Mustang unveiled. Uh, it was, we got to get, take a look at it. Um, what was it on Friday here Friday, at Phoenix? Friday, yep. And it has some really sharp body lines and things like that. Beautiful and car. things that you would definitely not, certainly, certainly they're not going to go to the wind tunnel and uh, have numbers that make the car worse. So Ford is going to have a better car um, next year. And, um, you know, we'll see uh, because Chevrolet and Toyota, um, you know, there's there's going to be a new car there. Um, so Toyota too, though. What's that? Toyota's getting a new car too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But Chevrolet. Yeah, that's you don't know. So, I mean that, and you talked about it earlier. We we just talked about the Hendrick kind of like you know swing, right? Talk about track house. You know, beginning of the year they looked fantastic. And then, really, after Nashville, where's Ross Chastain that team been? Hey. Well, that's that's the other thing too. I mean, so how do you look at that? Like Chastain was, you know, his season. You had a, he, you know, he was totally relevant mm -hmm. up till Darlington, mm -hmm. and totally irrelevant, fell off a cliff. Um, then, they, you know, they had some decent runs at the start of the playoff. They had the bad break at Talladega. And all of a sudden, they pop out of nowhere and win. Um, are we going to see more of that next year where teams go like this, spike up and down? Are we going to see somebody with one of their new cars yeah. hit on hit on something? And we're going to be like, whoa, or Ford, Ford is now like unbeatable. Or conversely, are Ford and Toyota because they're getting these two cars, is it going to take them a while to play catch? -up? We have seen that before where – Oh, you think they might struggle I mean, to handle like I'm saying it could. Strength. We have seen that before, where it yeah. takes teams and the manufacturer a little bit of time to sort it out and to learn the kinks and to learn how to, to make it better. And that is an opportunity potentially for Chevrolet to pounce early in the season as this you know, works itself out. It's really yeah, but I don't think that they want to um, – I don't think that they – two your two manufacturer rivals getting a new car. Oh, no. but they're, I mean, you, you could say, okay, well, we start really well. But oh no, I'm I'm worried if I'm Chevrolet because I think by the end of the year, I think no matter what happens at the beginning of the season, I think by the end of the year, I think Ford and Toyota are going to be in a much better spot overall than Chevy is. Yeah, it may not start that way. Is what I'm saying. We have not seen Toyotas yet, right? Is that no, right? That's correct. Any any idea when we might? I'm not asked. Oh, okay. Soon, I would imagine. Sometime this off season. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Um, 
Well, I, I tell you what, it's going to make um, it's going to make predictions very hard next year. We'll have to worry about that it's in a little while. Week. Huh? It's hard every week, though. This, this car is. We, yeah, we've seen this. I mean, we have seen teams. We've seen track house come up. We saw last year. We saw legacy pop up. I mean, you 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 know, we saw colleague win a race this year. I mean, you you have this a little bit of. We saw Spire this year with Corey LaJoy. They, they punched above their weight class at times. And, you know, they were the team that didn't have a, you know, they completed all 36 races this year. I mean, it's just, this is this is this car where, and it's a schedule. Because there are, so before it was so many, it was so intermediate track heavy. Where it's like, if you could hit on an intermediate track package, you could carry yourself through the, through the season into the playoffs. Because what, five of ten playoff tracks at one time were mile and a half racetracks? Remember that? I didn't like that anymore. You're yeah. going from one week, you're going to a speedway to a short track. Well, so, I mean, it's just, it's now so you, hard. Next to, year, you're, you're, even when you look at the playoffs, you're going to have two super speedways, two road courses. Yes. You end on a short track. You end on two short tracks in a row again. Yeah. Um, I don't know how you can, I don't know how you can credibly look at, you know, the season next year or the playoffs even and say, this is what we think, this is what we know is going to happen. Oh, yeah, this is going to happen for sure. I mean, what, why are you smiling at me? Because I'm thinking, I feel like this is the perfect combination and recipe for a lot of Jeff Gluck rants for next year. <laughs> and I'm oh, you're really excited you're looking about forward that. to that? Oh, God, yes. I thought we were going to get one earlier in the show, and I'm really pumped we didn't. Okay. Well, uh, what else about the cup race? I know there's one person that, uh, well, there's actually, I was going to say there's one person that retired, but there's actually two people that retired after this race. Um, well, one guy retired, the other guy's going to be racing the Xfinity. Okay, well, part time at least. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so quite the emotional moments at times for Kevin Harvick, which all season long, you know, he was, you know, we, they kept bringing him in. Oh, last time you're going here, last time you're going here, right? And he's like, yeah. I want to be done last year. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't want to be here. <laughs> he didn't really, you never got that emotion. You never got no. that sentimental. Never. Um, and I think it was, I think it was on NBC. Um, they said today that at a team dinner on Monday night that I guess Harvick had stood up to start talking and in the first line of his address to the team got completely choked up and couldn't speak. Um, and then we saw it after the race where, and then Harvick said, even in our, in the Friday press conference, he did this, this weekend does feel a little bit different. You know, this is, um, and his kids came on the radio Mm -hmm. before the race and both gave a message to him, which mm -hmm. you don't hear the kids on the radio very much, if ever, for anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And so Kelly Crandall, after the race, you know, he Harvick did a big media scrum by his car, and he was, you know, answering the questions and everything, and Kelly Crandall from Racer asked him, you know, well, how about with the, you know, your kids talking to you before the race? And he started to answer, and he got completely choked up. I've never mm. seen Harvick like that. Are you kidding me? You know? Got completely choked up, couldn't say anything, turned away. And um, there's some video of it out there. Leaned down to hug his kids, hug his family, got a big hug from Delena. And uh, they started the beer toast and stuff. But he he couldn't speak. I mean, so the emotion hit him at the end, I think, you know. Um, but it's I think it was emotional for a lot of people in the sense that this isn't just – and no offense to other big-name drivers that have left, like – you know, whether it whether it's Tony Stewart or Jeff Gordon or Dale Jr., because they were all part of, at least to me, a big era. Mm -hmm. And one by one, they sort of started dropping off, right? But like Harvick was really, really, truly the last bridge, the last full-time driver, at least. You know, Jimmy will come back and he'll run a couple. Newman's running a couple, right? But like the last full-time driver who was truly the bridge to the Winston Cup era, the pre-playoffs era, um, you know, the guy that took over for Dale Senior, which seems like a lifetime ago now, right? Yeah. And he was always that – you always had that consistency with, with those guys in that generation. And it was always like, well, at least Harvick's still around. You know, at least we, have, we can ask him how it was compared to this or whatever. And he'll still be around because he's, he's going to be on Fox and he's a mentor to a lot of young, young drivers and he's got business interests in the sport. But losing him as a driver on the track, that's uh, that's big. That is that is truly sort of like the end of an era, I think. I think you, you summarized the best. I mean, this is the end of an era. This is a driver 
who links back to that, who raced in the, the Bush series, right? Like, you don't have any more left. This is it. And they're going to lose that. It's it's a connection. You use the word bridge. I think that's a really good word because it's a it's a it's a bridge from that older generation of fan who you know remembers Winston Cup and you know and Dale Earnhardt and all that to this new generation. And Harvard did a really really good job of being relevant throughout. We've seen a lot of people struggle to adjust to changing times, technology. And Harvard, for the most part, throughout, was always a presence, always competitive and winning races. And for the last 10 years since he joined Stuart Haas Racing, has been a force year in and year out. I mean, it's he's always been, you know, largely, except for maybe the last couple of years, of somebody that you look at and say, this guy's, this guy's a title contender every single year. If you're going to win a championship, you got to go through this guy. And we're losing that. You're, the sport's losing that. And you're losing a voice. You're losing somebody who's got a lot of perspectives. Uh, as a driver, owner, business manager, all of these things, and he's got the bona fides to back it up. He's not just somebody who talks a big game. He's somebody who talks a big game because he's got a big game, right? How do you replace that? And I, I don't – these things happen. You tend to have a lot of these, oh, man, what's the sport going to do? I, I think the sport's going to be fine, honestly. I think it's in a good spot. I think there's a lot of leaders in the garage and that kind of thing, but – I don't say that disrespectfully, though, but I, I, but you're, this is something. This is a huge thing. This is a huge, significant thing, and the sport's going to be fine going forward. But that doesn't mean it doesn't stay. The elder statesmen now are going to be Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin, who were born about six months apart. Um, it hurts to say that because they're my age, forty-three at they're least. Old. Um, Denny's going to turn forty-three. Uh, in a few weeks, Martin already turned 43. I think I think his birthday's in June. Um, personally, on a totally separate note, it's really weird because my entire career, I started covering my first race in 2004. Mm -hmm. I've always, I've always been. I mean, I started really young, and I've always been. I've always had drivers older than me that I'm covering. I'm very. I'm getting very close now to having every single driver be younger than me. You know, probably within a few years. That's really Grandpa Jeff. Really, you're you're almost my I age. Look, I look younger though. Oh, oh, you look younger, so it doesn't matter. Okay. It's interesting you talk about elder statesmen, and, and I think you know, for Denny's case, yeah, he's a veteran. He's around. He's, he's a voice. Like absolutely. he's a voice. He yeah. wants to be a voice. He wants to, and he's Truex has no interest. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like Denny's got a lot of perspective too, as an owner and everything else. And that's Truex. You no, know, like, and we don't also let's be honest. How long is Truex in your own? Yeah. Like, um, I think in addition to Hamlin, I think Logano's the other one too. And Brad, That's what I was going to say. Yeah, yep. uh, I think Brad. You can throw Brad in there too. Though well, Brad doesn't think, seem yeah. as interested in it. There was a time mm -hmm. where Brad really wanted to be that leader, right? And now it seems like he's, he's more focused on his team himself, yeah, and it, it, and, and building that yeah. organization up. He's not. He's. I think he's less focused on like let me be a huge voice within the yeah. sport. Where Logano, I think, really has taken that mantle 100%. a lot, and and. Um, especially behind the scenes is trying to, you oh, know, yeah. not even air stuff in the media and things like that. Um, he and Hamlin go about it in two different ways. Uh, I can respect both of them. Obviously it's more, it's better for us, the Hamlin method, mm -hmm. because we, we want to know what's going on. God we want to ask him. questions and God bless him. <laughs> hashtag. Thank you, Denny. Um, but you know, it's, it's those, that's, you know, I think you're going to have to have other people step up left, you know, and, and I've, I asked Kyle Bush, um, I don't know, a month ago or so or ago, like, are you interested in stepping up now that Harvard's yeah. doing and stuff like that? And he said, they don't listen to me. So no, like I, I'm not, I'm even going to waste my time. So, it, you know, there's sort of a, there's going to be a time when some others need to start stepping up and maybe someone like a Blaney yeah. uh, with a new platform um, can start stepping into that and, and filling that void a little bit as well. I mean, he's, he's not going to be the champion. People listen to the champion. Um, that seems to, to, it's always carried a little bit extra weight. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and he's still young. He's not even 30 yet. So um, because, you know, guys, guys like Larson, uh, Chase Elliott, they, they don't seem to have an interest no, in that. They, so no, there's nothing against it. It's a personal to each own. Yeah. You don't have to say. Interesting to see if Ross, I mean, I know Ross isn't really necessarily popular around driver, among drivers, but I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing sometimes. Like it's good to have a voice. It's going to be interesting to see if he can continue to do well and where he is at because he doesn't seem – like a guy, he does seem like a guy who's willing to speak his mind on things. And so 
it's going to be interesting to see how this all evolves a little bit and who is, is steps up and, and do this. But I, again, I, I do think the sport is going to be okay. Well, speaking of Harvick, I, I, there was a great moment today when he took the lead. The fans were going freaking crazy. You were convinced he was going to win. I thought he was going to win. I was telling everybody. Do you want I didn't, to tell them your theory or no? Absolutely. Okay. I'll, I'll share. I thought that the four car was going to have all sorts of, Rodney Childers tricks on it that he was going to pull out every stop possible. Um, it probably wasn't going to be legal on a normal week, but I thought it might have the speed and Harvick would get out front. He would win. He would win. Somebody else would finish second in the championship. It wouldn't affect the championship. The stands would about fall down. Everybody would go freaking crazy. Harvick, Harvick, like chanting and would, would, would he be, would, would NASCAR disqualify him after that? Like, I think that would be one where NASCAR would be like, it's, it's, it's your last race. It's not going to change anything. It's not going to change the championship. It's a great story. Like, yeah. let's just let it go. I mean, I don't know if that's – I hope nobody from NASCAR thinks that's mean to say, but, I mean – You're such a cynic. You, you don't think so? You think they would have DQ'd? Wait, wait. Are you serious? You think they would have DQ'd Harvick if he won with an illegal car? No. I said this at Talladega. I said the same thing. Like, I said if Harvick would have won that race, yeah, like I would have been, I would have loved to with the win with yeah. the bolts, and, 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 and especially the obvious as it was, by the way, because it was very obvious. Like, yeah, I, I yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm trying, I'm trying to be, but sick. it is that that changes the playoffs yeah. or still or this, whatever. This doesn't. Right? I, I don't know. I try not to. I this would not have changed anything. I don't want to be a sin. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that person. That's cynical to suggest that. They could have been like they could have let something slide. Oh, is that to, really cynical? Is a sporting is a league really going to let? Uh, you think they would have been like, oh yeah, you're disqualified in your final race, and all this unbelievable, you know, therapeutic, you know, joyous moment for the sport, celebrating this. That's all taken away. We're going to completely wipe that out. The integrity of the officials, Jeff. You're bes- you're besmirching them. This is a sport. They would never, ever turn their back. Officials don't turn a blind eye to anything. All right. Well, okay. I guess that's your opinion. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying. I mean, I'm not saying that, that would happen very often or something. I'm just saying this is an incredibly unique case. That would be okay. At the very least, it would be an extremely hard decision to be like, "All right, are we really going to DQ this guy?" Like what? Why? Why would you stop? Just be like because the fine. integrity of the sport is what does at it matter? stake. What does it matter? It's not not affecting the championship. It's you the last race. Have, for this you dude. need to have people watch this and know what happened in front of them is hundred percent legit. This Are isn't professional serious? wrestling, Jeff. Are you being serious? This is not professional wrestling. The officials have integrity. You're just trolling me. All right. What is wrong with you? Okay. Um, well, I apologize then if anybody's offended by me questioning their. Integrity. I don't even think that is. I mean, I think I would be like, if even if I was the official, I'd be like, that's, it's all good. Yeah, we're just gonna. I mean, come on. Like, as someone who talks about consistency and credibility, and now you're like, I, oh yes. yeah, like, is it now you're willing to turn? Yeah, is it hypocritical? Absolutely, Never it's stopped hypocritical. It before it is absolutely. I'm being hypocritical for sure, but it's like, <laughs> I mean, ah, I don't know. Uh, All right. Is there anything else from the Cup Series race that you would like to no. discuss? No, we are uh, we are good on that. Let's get to it. Let's talk about the Truck Series race first mm-hmm. instead of Xfinity. We'll, okay. we'll end on a good note with Xfinity. Can we do this? Can what? we stop here oh. and then pick up this conversation as a two-parter? Why? Because we need to kind of relocate it, I think. For oh, Ryan, for we need to go yeah. talk to the champion? We need to go talk to the champion. Well, what are we going to do with these people watching? Well, we can send another link and we can do a two-part video thing. Or I, I'm just – I'm trying to coordinate here. You know? Well, how, how, how much time do we have? Uh, I got a, you got like five – you got a five minutes. Five minutes? Well, I, well we, I, we, need to, we need to move in like five minutes. Oh, leave in five minutes? Yeah. Oh, geez. I don't know if I can um, – well, I guess there's not really that much to say about the Chuck series other than – Number oh here, let me let me do a speed thing on this, okay? The truck series race was one of the most embarrassing races I've ever seen in my life. I think that was absolutely pitiful. Everybody already knows that though. Everybody agrees from the cup drivers. By the way, Justin Schuler kicking the tires. He asked all the cup drivers what they thought 
about the truck race, check out his article. There's some fire quotes in there from mm -hmm. drivers. They're absolutely right. Even Elton Sawyer in the driver's meeting today says, well, we saw what not to do that's great. in the, in the, I mean, that's, that's like NASCAR. We, um, we all agree. I, the amount of people, high ranking people that said things to me that they were so embarrassed by this. I wish I could. Oh, I wish I could. Absolutely. Now the one thing is that I wish had gone differently is I wish NASCAR had parked Corey Heim. I feel like what Corey Heim did was far worse than what Carson, Carson Hosen did. Yeah, because one was an accident, but one was intentional, and then I agree. Look, I get Carson Hosen as far as a reputation. He drives over his head. He's over-aggressive move, all this stuff, right? Like, and, and okay, people say, oh, he's acting. It was fake. Okay, wh whatever. He didn't – he still did, wasn't like, I'm going to go wreck this guy and ruin his championship. He was – he raced – he made a mistake in, in my view. He yeah, made yeah, a mistake, okay. right? But now he, he, does, he does a lot. A lot. Okay, lot. fine. But – Corey Heim altered the championship. Mm -hmm. he, that manipulated the race. That changed the outcome of the freaking championship. Um, Grant Enfinger should have won that championship after that whole thing happened. He was robbed of that, and Corey Heim was allowed to finish the race. Why? Denny Hamlin got fined you know, for rubbing Ross Chastain for eighth place after he admitted it, right? But, like, you're, you're, you, can, you can wreck someone in the championship race on purpose, another championship contender, and alter – with three laps to go, and they let that go? What? How? Okay, so is there anything else you want to add in trucks? And we're in our No, we got it. Actually, I think we have a few more minutes than we had thought. Um, <laughs> what, what I think. I just uh, like speed blasted yeah, you through that. Respond to that text, and then you, oh, I'll show them again. And so, don't you got to work an Android phone? No, I don't know how to do this. Oh, I can't do the damn thing. Good board. But we have more time. Okay. okay. And so, here's what I, here's my, I don't disagree with anything you said. You're, you're right. If Corey Heim would have handled that better, he could have still won the championship. You could have wrecked Hosevar and won your championship. What blows my mind is, didn't Landon Castle say this about Danica a few years ago? Remember when Danica tried to wreck him? Like 101 of stock car racing is – Rule number one yeah. is don't wreck yourself. That's it. Like if you're going to put him in the wall, put him in the wall. But don't wreck yourself because you could have put him in the wall and ended his day and send him a message. And you still would have had a truck then – that you would put fresh tires on it, even if you got sent to the back. And you could have come back up and maybe won that championship. And so, yeah, young driver made a mistake, and it's unfortunate. Um, it's There's a lot of blame to go around. It's the host of our thing is when is, you know, we saw it at Martin so pop up again on the cup side. And it's a kid who, and let's be honest, like there was Mar Denny Hamlin, Mark Jr. Jr., both said they thought it was kind of an act that he feels contrite. And it's mm -hmm. like, when does, when do you really truly push that aside? You know, give credit to Ty Gibbs. Cause we had this conversation about Ty Gibbs about, he needs to, you know, he needs to be better and more mature. We haven't had any problems with Ty Gibbs this year. Like he's done that. Like he's largely kept his head underneath water, just gone out and raced, you know, like when is Hosevar going to do that? And that's the problem. And I, I, Denny Hamlin brought up a really good point in his media uh, scrum the other day about how NASCAR officiates and how maybe it is time to start policing, you know, sending guys to the back when they're involved in incidents. And I, and I, I don't disagree with that. And I asked him, like, have you brought that up to NASCAR? And he really hasn't. And I think it's something worth considering. And I'm not saying you even need to do it at the cup level because I don't I, – to me, I, I don't know if you need that rule at the cup level. But why can't have that rule at the, the truck series? Yeah, but is, they're going to – NASCAR wants the rules to be the same across all three series. But not, I agree, But they're though. not, though, because you got pit stops are different. Okay. Well, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to want to officiate it. They're not going to say, all right, we have this rule in, in uh, trucks and Xfinity, but when you get up to cup, you can wreck somebody. I just, or, or I, I, somebody. I, just I, I agree with you, though. Like, um, you know, similar to, you know, again, to, to local short tracks, um, whether you meant to or not, if you get into somebody and you turn them, you go to the back. Okay, yeah. that's just how it is. Um, but I've been railing against this for, uh, you know, going back to, I think you you, look, you thought I was absolutely nuts about a year and a half ago when Logano wrecked Byron or put him in the wall, essentially at Darlington mm -hmm. in, in May. We were at the F1 race in Miami. And I said, you know, they might need to start thinking about penalties. And you're like, no. You can't do it. That's the yes. I mean, the two guys racing for the lead, I, um, I have no problem. I, I have a he big boot, problem. He booted him. That's out fine. They're racing hard for the lead. I have I put him in the wall. That's fine. They're racing hard. So what's this what do you say? Was not this, this was a cold blooded. You hit me. This horse bar was you know like lap at that time. Like if you have there's a there no, is no, a, no 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 no. We're not even talking about that. I'm talking about 
even if Hosovar, Hosovar wasn't sent to the back. Yeah. I'm saying Hosovar, and under the rule I'm talking about, if you do what Hosovar did, mm -hmm. he goes to the back too. Like yeah. avoidable contact. Yes, this is where I, this is where I do get worried about this rule. Is like okay. how do you? Well, you have to officiate it. Yeah, like how do you? You know, you you want more balls and strikes calls, and that's that's the concern is because you're going to end up having those, and that, that's the right. problem. We're we we have ten minutes before we have to be out on the front stretch. Okay. To, okay. So, Go ahead. Let's get to the poll then. No, we don't. We're not doing the poll. We have three more things to do. No, we don't. We keep going. I'm talking. Okay, we need to talk about the Xfinity race, which complete. You know. What, what is, what's the line from a um, – is it from Dumb and Dumber? And they say, you and you completely redeemed, redeemed, redeemed yourself. Yep. You go ahead and redeemed yourself. Yep. Boy, I was down all the young drivers coming up through, and then you get that late restart in Xfinity, so and you're like, oh, gosh, you know, this is going to end terribly, just like the truck race. What are the, what's going to happen here? This is this is a disaster. Um, and then they, again, redeemed mm -hmm. themselves. It was beautiful. Um, yes, John Hunter Nemec Nemechek overdrove the corner. Um, but you know, it was just great racing. I mean, they were all going for it. Nobody did anything dirty. Or, they raced it out. Or racing. Cole Good Custer stuff. had some, a phenomenal mm -hmm. restart. Um, spectacular. Um, by the way, Ben Rhodes, we didn't see Ben Rhodes. Congratulations. Uh, you know, another great press conference, by the way, Ben Rhodes That's calls nice. me Jeffrey. Only, only, only Ben Rhodes and my family can call me Jeffrey. Okay. Not even you. Okay. Thank you, Jeffrey. What's your point number two? Um, so, uh, yeah, so I don't know if you heard about this, Jordan, but <clears throat> we got up to the press box Friday night for uh, the Xfinity or for the truck race, mm -hmm. and everybody looked down and go, oh, the, the restart zone's been moved. Huh, that's weird. Why? Oh, that, that's really odd. Can you guys still see us? Anyway, I'm, I'm just keep still rolling on this. Yeah, this, is, this is chaos at this point. Um, so, yeah, so like the restart zone, they said, was mistakenly moved. We still never really got an explanation of how that happened. Mm -hmm. Somebody painted over the old restart zone, which was longer in the spring, but it got moved like 30 yards. Mm -hmm. um, that's not good. I'll just, I don't know. I don't know. It's an a comment. That, that but can't happen. That, that's all your comment? Well, I mean, it, it, I don't know what else to say. Like, okay. No, I mean, it can't happen. I mean, like, you, it's inexcusable. I don't, I don't understand. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we got we to do the poll then, I guess. Okay. Before we do that, uh -oh. on behalf of the – was it a good race committee? Since I won last week, and now I am the, say it with me, the champion, we have something for you. Who's we? The, the good race committee. The committee? Yes, which is consistent of me. <laughs> so this, my friend, right here, is a participation trophy. Congratulations for finishing second, both in the regular season and in the playoffs. It fits you. Small trophy for small guy. Well, what do you get? I get to decide what you wear. <laughs> you don't get the trophy. Uh, it's a little. That's a little participation trophy, Jeff. That's a you good... should actually get a trophy for winning. I do. I the trophy is going to be able to dress you. <laughs> you can keep this if you want. No, no, I got like ten of them now. <laughs> you, you had to buy a ten, pack. Buy a ten pack. <laughs> a ten pack of trophies. <laughs> there was a party city next to my uh, hotel. Oh, you uh, have one. I got one. <laughs> wow, that's spectacular. Oh, yeah. So I went and picked it up there night. Oh, well, that's that's real. I, I think I'll actually keep this. I don't have many trophies in my life, and I'll surprise you. Oh, well, second place. There you go. Congratulations. It doesn't say second place. On uh, it was. I couldn't have it. I could. I'm, I'm going to sure pretend it's first place. <laughs> you do whatever you get. I'm going to. My kids are going to say, "Oh, where'd you get that trophy?" I'm going to say, "I won." Uh huh. I'm not going to tell them it's participation. And then you can show them the outfit. You're going to wear it. They tell them. <laughs> that would be so funny. Anyway, all right. Listen, we've got to do the good race poll. We we have to be out on the front stretch in like five minutes, uh, or we're gonna miss our chance to interview the champion Ryan Blaney, which we'll add to the end of this podcast for those of you who are watching on the YouTube thing, and those of you who are listening are, are like, what, why, "Why are you talking about this?" Anyway, all right. Um, it doesn't matter, but what do you think the poll's gonna be? I don't care. I won. You just said we had to do the poll. No, I was wanted to do this. Oh, okay. you know, right now the only thing I'm missing is a cigar. Can okay, he has he's putting his foot up on the table with his loaf sockless loafers, um, which made your feet bleed this weekend. By the way, that was my problem. Uh, poll seventy eight percent. I say eighty two. I think people liked it and so. they like the champion, and it's going to be in the low eighties. That's good. I almost went eighty. That's a good pick. All right, popular winner too. So um, for those of you 
watching on the stream. We have to end it now because we have to run out to the front stretch. Um, but listen, um, we're going to have like, what, are we doing like five more episodes? Yeah. I think we're going to do like five more episodes before we're done. Um, so, to, you know, don't don't be like, oh, bye, bye. Oh, we're done with the off season. We're, we're still, we, we're still going to go. We're still going to talk to you like every week. So stay with us. Keep checking your feed. We'll be back. We'll talk more, but we'll see. We'll wrap up the season. We're both going to the F1 race in Vegas. We're going to be talking about that whole deal. Um, we're going to be doing a, a, a listener mailbag. Yes, we are. Listener mailbag. <laughs> that was our most popular episode of last year. So we're going to do an advice thing too, right? We might. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do lots of stuff. So that's for you guys. Um, we love you. Seriously, you you guys are amazing. Um, thank you for all the support. You, you made this year so much fun for us. Um, and now we're going to be late, so we've got to go, but, um, thanks again. And, uh, we will, we will talk to you. We'll talk to you next week. So we're not saying goodbye. See ya.